All parties, please step forward. Joseph David is suing his former friend, Jonathan Borum, for podcast equipment. Mr. David, your claim that the defendant has acoustical equipment that you purchased for what looks to be a joint venture in Mr. Borum's music podcast. Yes, ma'am. You were making this music podcast in the basement of your house? Yes, Your Honor. Starting in what year? This year of March. And, Mr. David, you were friends. You knew each other, and you knew he was in this business. I don't know. What is your business? I deliver bread. I'm a bread vendor. What kind of interest do you have in music? Because that's what he was doing. Well, me and Jonathan have known each other for 20 years. Jonathan and, and I have known each other. Jonathan and I have known each other for 20 years, and he's always been in the music scene. He's an artist himself. A well, that's artist. what I gather. What about you? I was just a supportive friend in it. Okay, well, it clearly, you spent some money on music equipment, so it was more than being a supportive friend. If you were just being a supportive friend, then you made a gift to him of this music equipment. No, ma'am. You decided you wanted to be part of this music podcast. That's what you said. Correct. When did you make that decision? Sometime mid-June after I had... June of this year? This year, correct. I had received a small amount of money, and I was able to... From where? A uh, settlement from, from an what? injury, car accident. Okay, how much did you receive? A little under 50 grand. And I seen an opportunity for me to invest and help out and help a friend and be able to invest into something that if we blew up one day, I could receive, you know, royalties from and money back in return. And oh, did had, you have a written agreement with we, him? We did not have a written agreement. Well, I'd like to know what the agreement was. So he was also in the car accident with me as well. And so he's got a settlement coming. He told me this was all verbal that once he received that money, he would pay me back at least half of the equipment. So he would have a joint venture and he would pay you for half the equipment you purchased? This was at the beginning, correct. Do you remember, Mr. Borum, that conversation? Uh, no, ma'am, Your Honor. Were you in the automobile accident with yes, him? Yes, ma'am, Your Honor. You did not receive a settlement. Is there any reason? You uh, we're all... still going through the court process. Okay, so you're going to trial. Actually, yeah, that's what it was set to go to trial because I didn't get the offer that my lawyer put in. So it's going to trial on my side, but on his behalf... No, he's already yeah. settled his case. Yeah, mine's not settled yet. Okay. You indicate what you want is your equipment back. No, I'd like the money back. No, well, you get your equipment back. I, if it's yours. I, I want the money. I don't trust that he will give me the equipment back in good condition. Let me explain this to you, Mr. David. If that's what you want, well, that's then not... I'm going to let you withdraw this case and go back to small claims court. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I'm going to dismiss your case without prejudice which will allow you to go back to your small claims court, or do you wish to proceed with it today? I wish to proceed. Great. Why did you say, I'll do the editing myself? Because he was yelling at me, and I told him... What was he yelling at you? Because he said that the, the product wasn't up to par. He said... Do Just a second, Mr. Borum. This is your business. Right. Will you tell me, did you think the product was up to par? Joseph David claims his former friend, Jonathan Borum, is wrongfully keeping his podcast equipment. So, when you decided to enter this, according to you, agreement, that you would be in a joint venture, when he got his money, he would pay in his half of what the equipment costs, which you indicate, I think, is about $4,400. Correct. What I gather is there was a session set up that was supposed to take place in your basement. Yes, ma'am. And when was that? I believe it was around, like, early, early June, June-ish. Okay. And you have proof of the value of the equipment, I assume, Correct. and what exactly what equipment there is. Correct. Is there, Mr. Barm, a dispute about what equipment he purchased? Is there a dispute? Yes, Yes, because he has a receipt. I just want to know if I have to go into this. Well, on the on the receipt, we, we pur he purchased it on his card, but we're friends. We were going in together, so he bought it on his card because he had the money. Oh, just a second. Uh -huh. I understand that, Mr. Oh, Borum. I'm asking I'm you whether there is an agreement as to what the uh -huh. pieces he purchased on his card. Yes, ma'am. As, as far as the agreement, I, I'm not understanding the question. Okay. What pieces of equipment did he buy that's in your basement? Cameras. Camera? Cords. Cord? And probably the Black Magic. Black Magic? Black Magic, yes, ma'am. It's a device that works. Uh... Do you know what he's talking about? I do. Anything else that's down there that you purchased other than those three items? Yes, ma'am. In total... Watch. Look at me. Tell okay. me what In else. In total, there's two Panasonic cameras. 
Are there two cameras yes, that he purchased? Two cameras. Can I look down for? I, I can't hear you if you're mumbling. There's a uh, lighting, three lights. There's three lights. Did he purchase three lights? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Wireless mics. How many? Uh, it's a set of two. Did he purchase those? Yes, ma'am. And not to correct you, but we purchased those. No, you didn't pay for it. I gave him the money. Just, just I a gave second. Him, I gave him cash. Oh, you did. Well, you're going to show me proof of that in a moment. Well, I don't have proof that I gave him cash. No, no, ma'am. Because we were friends, so. Uh, just a second. Okay. You have no proof? Never did he happened. give you cash? No, ma'am. He never gave me a dollar. Fine. Not a penny. Okay, a let's time. go. We have three lights, two mics. What else? Uh, HDMI cord. He has a cord. Black Magic ATEM. He has that. Picture. 256 gigabyte SD card. What is that? It was memory a, if, card. It's a $50 memory card. It still it adds up. Let's go. The card reader, 20-foot cables, a stencil and a table. Just a second. A stencil and a table. Describe that. It's for the logo that we made for the podcast. I purchased the stencil for the logo. How much did you pay for that? Between that and the table is 80 bucks. Let's stay with the big ticket items, sir, that's, Henry. I was, I was adding Great. everything. Okay. Are we finished with the list? That's, yep. That's all. Very good. How much did you pay for these things minus the 50-buck card? In total, show me. Minus the 50 bucks. Yeah. 43.50. Okay. And all of that is in your basement now. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And what happened, according to what I read, there was a music session scheduled. And at the time that there was a music session scheduled, your daughter had COVID. Yes, ma'am. She lives on top of the house. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how old is she? That was in July. She's 10 months now, so probably about eight months. Okay. And she's cared for by both you and your wife. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And I gather, Mr. David, that when you found out that there was COVID in the house, you didn't want to go into the basement. Correct. And that was sometime in June. Correct. Okay, can you tell me about that conversation? Well, he told me that she had COVID, and then he said that his fiance may possibly have it, and he may possibly have it. He even took off work, and I filled in for him at work for three days because he may have had COVID or not, and he said he wasn't Well, he wasn't. Well. He didn't want to go in and risk it. Correct. So I told him I do not want to continue with this interview. He said he would continue on You mean the it. interview that was supposed to take place Correct. in the basement? Correct. How much after, Mr. David, did you find out that the infant had COVID and that Mr. Borum and his wife were both exposed, was the video podcast supposed to be made in the basement? Two, three days. Is that correct, Mr. Borum? From anywhere between two to five days, ma'am. And when Mr. David told you he didn't feel comfortable coming into the house, what did you say to him? I said, okay, I would have someone else fill in his position because I understood why he didn't want to come over. Okay, and did you have someone fill in his position? Yes, ma'am. And then what happened, Mr. Borum? The episode got done, and it wasn't up to par with Joseph's standards. So and? that's when the argument begun. Okay. And the argument was what? The argument was the guy didn't do it right. So it was a lot of bickering. So I told Joe, you know, I just do the editing myself. And he took that as I was cutting him out. Okay. So he was supposed to do the editing. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And why did you say I'll do the editing myself? Because he was yelling at me and I told him. What was he yelling at you? About? Because he said that the, the product wasn't up to par. He said, do. Just a second, Mr. Borum. This is your business. Right. Will you tell me? Did you think the product was up to par? I did, but I took. Did I, I, I thought it was up to par, but I took his recommendation because he, I brought him in for production. So I was like, okay, if you don't feel like it's up to par, let's figure it out. But then we kept going back and forth. So at that moment, I was like, you know what? I'll just do it myself so we can stop the confrontation because you didn't want to tell the guy what he did wrong. So then that's when the argument started, and he thought that I was kicking him out, which I never told him he couldn't come over, never told him he couldn't be a part of anything. I just told him. I wasn't going back and forth because that's why I brought you in okay. for that. May I see the credit card statement from the purchase of this equipment? And Mr. Borum, I want to see where you took out $2,200 from in cash. I want to see where you took. You I said you I paid him pay half. $2,200. I didn't pay half. Well, what'd long. you pay? I never, I never stated that Just I paid half. If you're partners, that's what you have to pay. How much did you give him? Uh, I gave him money here and there, like on oh, the no. order. That doesn't, help. No. that doesn't help me, sir. Oh. That doesn't help me. He's a bank I, I state. I didn't think what? I had to keep a record if we was best friends for 15 years. That's just... We I, I can't help you, sir. Shit. I can't help you if you say you paid a little bit here and there. I can't help you with that. Never gave so, me a dime. So, so when okay. you state that if you're a friend, you're doing this to help me out as okay. a gift for what I got going Never on. Never a gift. And then you try to bring you and take it back from Mr. me. Mr. Borum, how many podcasts have you made since June? Since June? Yeah. I think, I believe we on episode... Uh, 15, 16, something like that. 15, 16. Successfully. Yes, ma'am. And you intend to do this for profit? Yes, ma'am. Have you so far seen any profit? Uh, not, not as now, because you know you got you to gotta build up. Just a second. So not as of yet. Yes, ma'am. Do you work? Yes, ma'am. 
Does your wife work? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you have two incomes in the house. Right, right. And this is a side job for you. Correct. But you have to buy your own equipment because he's coming to get his equipment. That's going to be the court's order. So if it's I, his already, equipment, I already it's have his, it. It's his equipment. The equipment so he can't that he gifted to me. That's what that's what he told me he was doing no, because we were friends. Just, just, you know, and he appreciated what I was doing. This is why we're here. Right. And now I heard you and I heard him, and now I'm ruling. I am making an order that he, within five days of today, with a marshal or a sheriff, will come and pick up his equipment. So you I give, think I, I just, giving him my equipment back is um, no, tarnishing what I'm I got I'm giving going him on. his equipment back. But he never used it, though. I don't care whether he used it or not. It was a failed business venture where you it's both not expect... A, it's not a hey, venture. This, is not, this is not a tea dance. He's getting back his equipment. You and your wife have a side business going. Go buy equipment. Do you understand? Yes, Five days, wait outside. You'll get a copy of my order. You can go get your equipment. Thank you very much. This court is adjourned. If it's in your friendship, obviously it don't matter. You know what I'm saying? Eventually, you see the real person in somebody. That's all That's all I can say. You could be friends with somebody a hundred years, and they're going to change. Yeah, I mean, I thought I had a good friend for a while, but really... Man, the show going to go on, man. Y'all know. Make sure y'all watch. Tune in. I was just tolerating a really bad person. I've had understandings with my friends similar to what the plaintiff and defendant has. One of my friends will stay in my apartment from time to time for a few nights, and I always make sure, because you never want a holdover tenant or a friend staying longer than you had anticipated, and I'll text and I'll say, okay, you're good to stay there Thursday and Friday night. Let me know if there's any problems, but you got to be gone by 9 a.m. on Saturday. Just to memorialize the understanding that I think I have, even with friends, it's just always smart to have some sort of record of a business, an understanding, a trade-off. I just think that it's good practice to, even if it's just a text, something Thing to memorialize what you believe the understanding to be. I agree with you. Yeah. And that would make my job easy, but yep. would eliminate this TV program. <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> Potentially. Musician Luther Fortenberry for breach of contract and copyright infringement. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Hi. Case 2081, Kepper versus Fortenberry. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Kerper, it is your claim that the defendant breached a contract with you. The contract was a verbal contract. And the nature of that breach was the defendant envisioned in his mind the lyrics to a song. That was his business. And he asked, according to you, he asked you to put music to the lyrics. Am I understanding that correctly? The latter part is true. However, the it was more than just a verbal contract. It's also in writing. Okay, I'm going to take a look at it. Okay. That's important. And according to your complaint, you did, in fact, write the music... Correct. ...to his lyrics. That is correct. And you had an agreement in writing mm -hmm. that you would share the profits of any exploitation of that song... That is correct. ...with him. Yes. And that he breached that agreement. Yes, there was also an agreement that he would give me proper credit whenever he was using that. So now I would like to see if you say there was a written contract yes. that's signed by both parties. That's what I want to see. Okay. So this was the original version, which he offered me 25%. Just a second. Just a second. Okay. Just a second. Sorry. Okay. This contract is pretty straightforward, and it's signed by both parties, and it says Luther Winston Fortenberry created a song... Baby, I Got a Gun, and Charles Kerper, that's you, transcribed it to guitar. Correct. So what this contract says, mm -hmm. I just want you to understand, Mr. Kerper, is that the defendant created the song, and you transcribed it to guitar. That's what it says. And that was written in January of 2016. Correct. It's signed by both people. That is, that is correct. Okay. Yeah. Now, what you're showing me is something else how it started to change over time. Listen to me. This was your written contract. Right. Any change in that contract, unless I could really find that there was a meeting of the minds with regard to it, has to be in the same formality of this contract. This initial contract is very clear. It does not say that you created this music. I'm telling you what this initial contract says. By the way, Mr. Fortenberry, this contract was written January 30th, 2016. Yes, I'm looking at it. Yes. When did you create this song? In what month and year? About a year. I don't know exactly, but I was at a popular comedy store, and the manager of our show 
What show? The Ding Dong Show. What's the Ding Dong Show when you said our show? Was he involved in that? Just with this transcription. I was involved is, with other elements of the music as well with Mr. Fort. Well, Curry. right now this says transcribed. And what I asked you, a, a simple question, when did you write this song? At least a year before this contract. At least a year before January 30th, 2016. Yes. Yes. And I was singing it regularly a cappella at the club. Okay, and but you ask him to, to transcribe it. That's what it says. Now, this was done at the time that you transcribed it to guitar. I would argue I'd never transcribed it because... That's just a second. That's what this says. It doesn't say will transcribe it. It said transcribed it. Correct. To a guitar that they both agreed to submit for sale. Correct. Asking price will be $10,000 to rent mm -hmm. and $10 million to sell it outright and you will split it 75-25. That's what this says. That is correct. Now, yeah. Did you ever rent it? I never rented it or sold it. Just a sec, well, I'm asking you these questions. You never rented it? No. And $10 million to sell it outright, and you never sold it? No, ma'am. Okay, so it was neither rented nor sold, which was your original contract. And you have no proof to the contrary, that he neither rented it nor sold it. I have evidence that he did use it in other It doesn't say that you can't use it. Right, that is correct. Okay, now you want to show me, sir, because this is what your action is. You want to show me that this original agreement yes. was somehow modified correct. to give you a wider berth. This is correct. Okay, so I'd like to see what you have in writing. Okay, so immediately after that was signed, about four or five days later, you have the papers that stapled behind. I confronted Mr. Fortenberry and I said, this is not a transcribing project. This is a rewriting project. What he provided to me was not usable for transcription. And on the next page, we have a text message exchange that I highlighted where he well, just changes. Just a second. Shh. Sorry. Well, this is a text message from him to you. Correct. And he right? acknowledged. And well, just a second. Yeah. That's not acknowledging. That's a text message from him to you. Do you have your response to this? You can't unilaterally change a contract that's in writing. I mean, if you have an offer and an acceptance. Right. So where is your response to this? I don't believe I had a response in the history of messages I was able well, to retrieve, so. Then this is irrelevant. Okay. So far, we have this. We have okay. a writing signed by both parties, which is complete. It says what you did, what will you will be paid in the event of a rental or a sale. Now, you okay. want to show me yes. something else? So going forward, what he did was he registered the song with a registration company in San Diego. He did that without my knowledge. Just a second, that's irrelevant. This is your contract. Show me where it's a violation of this contract. This contract says you transcribe it to guitar. If the version that you transcribed with a guitar is either rented or sold, you will get 25% of the revenue. Right. So we already went through that. You do not have any proof that he either rented it or sold it. It doesn't say that you will be given credit. It doesn't say what your credit will be. If you have a modification where he yes. agreed that you will get certain credit and you accepted that, okay. I will see that. Okay. This is the most recent agreement signed in uh, okay. August right. 21st, 2018. It's dated okay. August 8th. Okay, shh. But I don't know what this means. Mr. Kerper. Yes. Agrees to release Mr. Fortenberry mm -hmm. from any financial liability for work performed prior to the date of this document. That it is prior to 2018. Correct. Payment by Mr. Fortenberry to Mr. Kerper will be considered compensation for his time, costs, etc. Mr. Kerper has invested in this ongoing project to date. What did he pay you? Because it doesn't say here. He didn't pay me anything. What he did was he gave me some camera equipment, which he'd promised me, which was outside of this project. And he gave me $300 as what was deemed a celebratory gift because we were wrapping oh, no, this no, up. No, 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 that's not what video. this says, Mr. Kerper. Mr. Kerper, we read a contract literally. Right. This is a poorly crafted document, but it's clear in regards to baby, I got a gun. Right. Mr. Kerper, that's you, agrees mm -hmm. to release Mr. Fortenberry of any financial liability for work performed prior to the date of this document. Correct. Payment by Mr. Fortenberry to Mr. Kerper will be considered compensation for time, costs Mr. Kerper has invested in this ongoing project. And what you're telling me is the payment 
was some camera equipment and $300. I would say it was not the camera equipment, it was the, the $300. What the camera equipment? This is some camera equipment I had had. I had sold him some of it prior and he had offered it back to me as a gift because I had invested so much work into this project. You got five more minutes of my time. Okay. You have no case. I believe I do, ma'am. No. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Sorry, you don't. You want him to say, whenever he performs the song, I wrote this song together with Mr. Carper, and I want you to understand that he's the music man. I don't know what a music man is. It's interesting when people sign contracts and they have no idea what they're doing. Charles Gerber claims musician Luther Fortenberry owes for breach of contract and copyright infringement. Now, those are the two written contracts. Do you have any further modification of those contracts in writing? Yes, I... I just a second. I'll see them. Okay. This is a contract in writing, 2018. This is 2016. And this was agreed by both parties. So the last agreement was you got $300. Did you pay him $300? $300 in camera equipment, about $1,500 worth. Okay. He started to mention that, and then he backtracked. Okay, next written contract after 2018. Yes, in that contract, which you have right now, it also says it serves to clarify previous misunderstandings that yes. I wrote the music and I was not a transcriptionist. Mr. Kerper is to be understood as the music man behind the music and not a transcriptionist. Well, who do you want that to be noted by? Mr. Kerper is to be understood as the music man with capital letters. Right. And I don't know what that means. This was his wording. Well, then that, you should have right. fixed the wording. I should have, you're correct. I, I don't know what a music man is. It's not a trademark, it's not a copyright, it's a nothing. I don't know what it means. So I wrote the music, which is in the version which he's using currently. I wrote that from scratch. There was no that transcribing. Doesn't say, that doesn't say that. Nothing here says that. The only thing this says is, Luther Winston created this song, Baby I Got Gun. That says he created it, you signed it. You wanted to clarify it, you wanted to be known as the music man, not just the transcriber. I don't know what music man means. And you got paid pursuant to this, although it doesn't say this, but you acknowledge it, you got paid $300. Okay, also in that agreement, it also says that I'll be given credit in future uses. It says that. As the music man. You want right. him to say you're the music credit, man? Which he did not give me Just credit. Just a second. You want him to say, whenever he performs the song, Baby, You Got Gun. If he gets up to perform that. I wrote this song together with Mr. Carper, and I want you to understand that he's the music man. It's interesting when people sign contracts and they have no idea what they're doing. Okay, let me see the next contract that so you have. So this is an agreement which is supposed to be a performance agreement with his producer from the comedy club. Wait, just a second, let me take a look at it. He's... Shh! Well, this is exactly what this says. This says this agreement, and this is August of 2018. And who sent this, by the way? Mr. Fortenberry sent that to me. Okay, it said this agreement gives Luther the right to perform music as the opportunity arises. Luther is further released of any further financial responsibility or debt owed making music. Charlie Kerpel will be referred to in the future as the music man. This payment will be for goods and costs making music for $300 and camera equipment. If any referral is made in the future as to who wrote and performed parts of said music above Charlie Kerper will be given those credits. Correct. Okay, he sent that to you. Where is your response? So he sent that back to me on August 8th. I... Just a second. Okay. He sent this to you. So I would like to see your response to this. I agree to your terms. I disagree with your terms. If you agree with the terms, then I might accept that as a modification of a contract. If you say I disagree with the terms, then there is no modification. We go back to these two signed agreements. Correct. Where is your response to that? Can I explain what happened after that? He's emailed that to me. I was here in LA and I didn't have an opportunity to entirely go over it, but we were trying to meet with him at a restaurant, also at the museum to have this resolved. So I had my phone only to look at it and he was playing hardball with me that day. So he sent me these 
email saying he had signed these agreements, which included making a referral to me and clarifying that I did in fact write the music, which he claims I transcribed. I need your response to him. Okay. If there is no response, we have these two agreements. So the response was this. That night, we, in, he finally in, agreed in, to meet in, with us. Right in writing. Yes. I want what you sent to him in response to this email. Well, I called him on the phone and I said, can we meet so we can sign this and put this pass so the music video could be moved forward. And he wanted a performance agreement so there wasn't any question as whether or not they could use the music in the video. So I arrived at his apartment. He made us wait outside for half an hour. Okay, when you know, I, down, that, Mr. Kerper, I really don't care. Okay. It's not relevant. Yeah. What's relevant is if you had a subsequent offer and acceptance to a new contract, a modified contract that he made via email mm -hmm. and you responded to him via email that I accept those terms or if you sent it to him and said these are the terms I want and he wrote back and I accept your terms unless you have that you are bound by these two written contracts which means you got paid. You got paid $300 and some equipment. You got paid right. and according to this contract when referring to this music and referring to you, he has to refer to you as, in capital letters, the music man. Correct. Give me credit. Correct. No, he has to refer to you as the music man. It says here in this contract, I'm sorry, if any referrals made in the future as to who wrote and performed parts of said music above, Charlie Kerper will be given those credits. It yeah, as a music say, man. No, it does not say music man here. Where? It should say it in the, not that one. Not that one either, the other one. There's no other, I only have two written oh, contracts. This is his original email to me that he sent me before the contract I don't want discussing, and it has my response. I have my response attached to it here. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Okay. Who wrote your offer is hostile and very lowball for what you're asking? I wrote that. I reject it. Absolutely. I'm not interested in selling. That is correct. Well, that doesn't modify. That means he made you a subsequent correct. offer after these two agreements. You said, I don't like that offer. That so there correct. was no change in these two written contracts, right. one of which called for payment, which you acknowledge you received in the form of $300 and camera equipment. He was limited to using it on one particular program, and he's used it in other places. And I said, Shh, put your hand down. When it doesn't appear that you're losing, you're supposed to keep your mouth closed. Charles Gerber is accusing musician Luther Fortenberry of breaking their contract. Luther claims he already paid Charles for his services. Mr. Kerpa, I want you to understand, you're looking at papers. Mm -hmm. What you're not understanding is, if you are going to modify a written contract, you have to do it with another contract in which there is an offer mm -hmm. and an acceptance. He made an offer to you yes. in this. You rejected the offer. In your response. Actually, that email he sent first, he worded it differently. And that's it the doesn't point matter. You rejected it. I rejected the part that included the sale. You, just a second. You can't take pieces of what he says. If you're going to modify a contract, which is clear, or as clear as it can be with two lay people write it, and which has been executed and fulfilled by mm. terms of payment, because there was an exchange of cash and goods, which is indicated in here, you have to have a modified contract. Correct. This is not a modified contract. He says to you, this is what I'm going to do. And you said to him, I reject it. It's a low ball offer. So we're going to get back to, is there a subsequent modification that says in addition to the $300 and the camera equipment and the fact that I will refer to you if I refer to anyone when he's singing the song, which I've never heard. I've heard of patter, you know, where somebody talks about patter and so-and-so wrote the song and he wrote it when he was mourning the death of his dog and then sings the song. You know, that patter, that's what I understand patter is, the chatter before. So if he was going to chatter about who wrote the song, he'd have to say, and the man behind the music is Mr. Music Man. That's all this says. And he's never sold it and he's never rented it that you can establish. He has used it in film productions? He can use it. 
Your contract doesn't prevent him from using it, sir. The final, this, I'm sorry, but the first one I gave you is the final. That was what led up to the. No, this is A, a clarification, because right. you asked, right? And this is your final payment. $300 and camera equipment because that's what you both agree that you got. The there is no line, modification. There is, though. Well, on then the top, show me. On the top line of the final, it says it'll be used exclusively in the Ding Dong Show and nowhere else without permission. And that is what is. Just a second. It says this agreement gives Lucifer Bermy the right to perform name music in the Ding Dong Show and the promotional video. Correct. And? That's it. So? So that is what he's limited to as far so, as performance. Okay, and? And he went and used my music in other productions with Well, show me. me. Okay. I also have a lyric uh, don't, sheet. Just, just, just that, listen to me, sir. Yes. I've already explained to you what this case is about. It's yes. a contract case. Okay. I'm not going to go through contracts one and contracts two. It was painful enough when I went through it the first time uh, half a century ago. Yeah. What I'm telling you is you have no modification of a contract unless there's an offer and acceptance. The only two contracts you have are here. I absolutely read this and it says this agreement gives Luther Fortenberry the right to perform music named in the Ding Dong Show and promotional video. Correct. That's what it says. You say he used it in other places. That is correct. There's no remedy if he uses it in other places. You only have a remedy, sir, if he sells it or rents it. And you're not asking for injunctive relief. There's I don't no know action. What he did with there's it, no, to be honest. There's, what? I don't know what he's done. I've asked him for a complete statement of where he's so used this. So, what's your just, just what second. payment? <laughs> Mr. Carper. Yes. You're the plaintiff. Yes. It's not his burden, it's your burden. What you're saying is he was limited to using it on one particular program, according to this, mm -hmm. and promotional. And he's used it in other places. And I said, shh. Put your hand down. When it doesn't appear that you're losing, you're supposed to keep your mouth closed. <laughs> it's your burden to show me that he used it in other places. That's first. Okay. Show me. I can do that. Just, I have the papers. I, I had it quite orderly before I came into court. And that's nerves happen. You can look for it, sir. I'm just advising you yes. that your action is for breach of contract. That's what you filed. Right now, I have two contracts. One contract was fulfilled with the payment of $300 and camera equipment. There is an agreement here, however, that says he can use that music on certain things. It doesn't say exclusively on certain things. He says he can use it on the Ding Dong Show and promotional video. I assume promotional video, if you're inferring what that means, is for the Ding Dong Show. Now, it doesn't say it. if he uses the music someplace other than the Ding Dong Show and promotional video and he gets paid for it, I get a certain amount of money. Your original contract provides for a 75-25 split if the music is rented or sold. Right. That's what it provides for. So when I accepted the payment on the contract, that was with the notion that he was going to give me credit in the future, which no. he has not done. Okay. We're done here, Mr. Kerper. It's unfortunate, <laughs> but you are bound by the terms of this contract. The terms of the contract are absolutely clear. You have one in 2018 and you have one in 2016. The one in 2016 is crystal clear. You're a transcriber and as a transcriber, you will get 25% if the music is either rented or sold. Subsequently, there was a writing that says you don't want to be known as the transcriber. You want to be known as the music man. Your Honor, so the, I did not transcribe anything. I wrote the music, okay. and that's Mr. why the Carpa, we're done. You paper. got paid three hundred dollars for writing the music and camera equipment. We're done. Your case is dismissed. This court is adjourned. Mr. Fort and Mary approached me to transcribe a piece of music he... Well, I'm sorry she had to listen to so many lies. ...presented me as completed, which it was not. And I'm glad she had something in print, like contracts. I helped develop the lyrics further and also write the music. I hoped that he would see the truth. Well, there's always more songs, isn't there? And correct his lies. While I really appreciate that these two plaintiff and defendants had a written contract, it's always a risk as a layperson to write a contract yourself. It has to be fully integrated, all the points have to be hit, and one major part that was lacking here was a remedy section. So if, if the plaintiff is claiming that he deserves some sort of credit or some sort of payment for a show or an exploitation going of forward. the song going forward, there needs to be a sentence, at least, that's a meeting of the minds as to what's going to happen if that condition in, is in not the future. met. 
in the future. In the future, because the contract, the second contract in 2018, clearly said he was paid. Mm -hmm. And he was and paid. And he signed it. And he signed it. He was paid $300 and some camera yeah. equipment. The, the defendant said it was worth $1,500. I don't know whether it was or it wasn't. Anyway, it was inartfully done. You have to give them credit I, for I, trying. Yes. <laughs> for trying. You know, they're music people. They're artists. <laughs> yeah. And Language and I, specifics and details is more our forte as lawyers. More important, it's so <laughs> frightening that I think I have a, a memory somewhere back here of the Ding Dong Show. So I'm going oh, in the goodness. back now and <laughs> look up the Ding Dong Show. Oh, I'd like to hear that origin not... story. <laughs> John and Cynthia Frazee are suing John's former client, Cynthia Booth, and her fiance, Dwayne Burnley, for posting damaging reviews. Court come to order. All rise. Seat, please. Hello, Judge. Why are you Case 2079, Frazee versus Burley Booth. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Frazee, you are an electrician by trade. Correct. And how long have you been in that business, sir? Since 1986 as a license and 1978 as an electrician. Now, maybe a decade ago, you're going to give me the exact year, month and year. You were called to do a job for this lady. Your last name is? Booth. Miss Booth. And you did an electrical job for her. We'll go into it more fully in a minute. When you were doing that job, you brought in a helper. That's this gentleman whose name is Mr. Burnley. That's correct. And before you brought in Mr. Burnley, I gather from the papers, Mr. Burnley did not know Miss Booth. Would that be a fair statement? That's a fair statement, but he did not bring me in. I was actually just driving down the street, and I'm new to the mountain, and I drove by and saw Mr. Frazee there, and I was... Listen, this is not gone with the wind. This okay. is not war and peace. I asked you a simple question. Before you were brought in on the job... Okay. ...you didn't know Miss Booth. That's correct. Right. And that was about 10 years ago. Correct. Since that time, since you were brought in on the job, you and Miss Booth have gotten to know each other a lot better. Correct. And... I assume that, by a lot better, that the two of you live together. Correct. And you've been living together for how long? Since November. Of this last year? Yes. November of 2021. But prior to that, you were social friends. Correct. And that social friendship started when first introduced to her at this job. Uh, it's no. It's the first time you met her. Oh, that's the first time I met her, correct. Correct. This is your problem, and this is the nature of your lawsuit. You allege that you did a job for Miss Booth almost a decade ago, and you came to ascertain that Miss Booth and or Mr. Burnley had written some negative reviews about your company, currently wrote negative reviews about your company, based on work that you did 10 years ago. Yes. That's your complaint. And you asked them to take them down. First they did, then they didn't. You found other ones posted in different areas. Now, Mr. Burnley, are you a working man, sir? Yes. What kind of work do you do? I'm an electrical contractor. In okay. Now, at the time that you first met Mr. Frazee, did you have your own company? Yes. You had your own company? Yes. In what year did you do Miss Booth's job? I did it on April 30th, 2013, Your Honor. That's not correct. That's not correct. Shh. Month and year, you say you did the job. The job was done on May 9th of, of 2013. What? Okay, so we're off by a month. Is that right? I don't care. You were talking about nine years ago. Correct. Now, tell me something about the job. What was the nature of the electrical job that you were doing? An older home needs to have at least a minimum of a 100-amp service. Ms. Booth's home had a 70 amp service at the time. She was purchasing it and that came up on the inspection report to replace that, which I was engaged to do. So far correct? No. Well, now I'll have your version. Did okay. you have to upgrade the electric? I had to upgrade due to a homeowner's insurance. Okay. That's well, the what home... they required. Okay. What's the difference in what he said? He said that you had to have your electricity upgraded. And it came up in the inspection report. It did not come in the inspection report. Well, then how did they find out? Of, I who was found honest out about with it? my policy. What do you I, mean you were honest with your well, policy? Well, they asked me what year the house was and what oh, um, amperage it had. And I said 75. And your insurance company said to you it has to be 110. 100. Oh, 100. Yes. Before you could move into the house, for one reason or another, you had to upgrade the electric. 
Correct. Okay, and you hired Mr. Frazee yes, to do that. Yes, they were my friends. I don't care whether he was your friend or not. If he was your okay. friend and he was a vet, you wouldn't have hired him no. to do your electrical work. <laughs> of course He was not. your friend and he was an electrical contractor. Right, correct. And when he came to your house to look at the job, did he come alone or with a helper? Alone. Once you change the ampage in a house, do you have to get somebody from either the county or the city where you live to sign off on it? That's either a yes or a no. Yes. And once Mr. Frazee did that, modified the ampage, did you have an inspection? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have that inspection? Yes. I'd like to take a look at it. And the job was not... I didn't ask That's you anything. Okay. That also includes Mr. Burnley's just a second. inspection. Just a second. I'm sorry. Don't volunteer. I'm old. I get confused. I try to keep these things very linear so even I understand them. This is the inspection sign-off on the work that you did in 2013. 13. Have you seen it? Yes, no. of course you have. No. Well, show it to them. You do remember that you had to have an inspection afterwards. Of course. of course. Okay, it's just common sense. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have the work done and you said to your insurance company, I had the work done, the insurance company would say to you, show me proof that you Correct. had the work done, otherwise we're not giving you insurance. Correct. So you know you had an inspection after he completed the work. It wasn't after it was, the work. The work was never... Shh, this shh, shh. I didn't ask you anything. Okay. But I will answer for you. She was not You can. Okay. You can. It, so the insurance company accepted your word that the work was done? Yes. <laughs> okay. Can I have that back, please? And I, I did tell them I had it signed off, but it was signed off when the job was half done. That's your problem. Okay. You want to sign off when something's half done? Fine. I wouldn't sign off when no, my I hair didn't. was half dry. I'm saying to you that it was nasty and malicious. And it wasn't until the two of you were hoochie-coochieing that all of a sudden we got negative reviews about a job they did nine years before. That's ridiculous. It's mean-spirited. John and Cynthia Frazee playing John's former client, Cynthia Booth, and her fiancé, Dwayne Burnley, slandered their business. Dwayne is countersuing for filing a wrongful lawsuit. Now, my next question to you is, after 2013, did you perform electrical work for Miss Booth in her house? That's either a yes or a no. Yes. Now I'm going to ask you, what was the nature? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I don't remember. You mean, just a sec, you remember the work that you did when Mr. Frazee was there in 2013, when you were with him, but you don't remember the nature of the work that you did for your girlfriend in 2018? I'm pretty sure it was a panel upgrade. Just I replaced... a second. I want you to think. What kind of work did you do for Miss Booth in 2018? It, it must have been the panel upgrade that I did at her house. I changed the 100 amp out to a 200. Sure, look at me. Because that would be... Look at me. I'm sorry. So you changed the 100 amp. Shh. This is not my strong suit, and I have to tell you something. Of the 100 million people who are watching this, they're going out to get a cup of coffee right now. <laughs> you changed the 100 amp that he had done in 2013 to a 200 amp, you upgraded it in 2018. And put a surge protection system And a in surge house. protection. Yeah, that, now okay. I do recall. Great. When was the first negative review that you can show me written about your company? Now we got what's going on. Now, I, now I have it clear. Honor. Do you have it clear? I think a little bit more fuzzy than you, but clear enough. <laughs> do you have it clear? I have it clear now. You have it clear? Well, just to make it crystal clear, Mr. Frazee did work at Miss Booth's home in 2013. It was electrical work. It was electrical work performed by him with the help of Mr. Burnley, because in order to get a homeowner's policy on her new house, she had to upgrade to satisfy, according to you, only insurance. Correct. That's what you say, from 70 to 100 amps. Yes. Look, this whole little thing at my age, I'm learning. Now, <laughs> evidently, they liked what they saw in 2013, and that materialized into a romance. Good for you. And in 2018, I assume he was living there? 
No. When did he move in? November moved... of. Shh. November. November of last year. Yes. Okay. But you were dating in 2018. Yes. Yes. In 2018, Mr. Burnley, not with the help of the plaintiff, replaced and upgraded the 100 amp to 200 amp, which is much better because I know that I have 200. That's you have to plug things in. It's 110, 220, right? Yeah. 110, 220. And he put in a surge protector. Now, even I know what a surge protector is. Correct me if I'm mistaken. That means if there's an overload, a lightning strike, whatever it is, it protects it so the whole board doesn't fry and everything turns off and then you have to replace all the lead. The wires go zzzz. Am I right? Right. So he upgraded the system and touched of necessity what Mr. Frazier did in 2013. No question, had to do that. Now I'd like to see the negative reviews and when they started. Fans. The first one we found was in 2019, Your Honor. Well, are these in order? This was... That's the most current one that was in February of 2022. Did you write this? Frazy Electric, he was supposed to do a panel change and never put rods in and fried my electronics in my home and garage opener. Left such a mess and never cleans up. That's correct. Did you write that? Yes, I did. When? In what year? Uh, it's about three years ago. Three years ago, 2018? Approximately. About when he changed the electrical yes, system. Uh, um, Just a second. Okay. About when he changed the electrical system. All right, then you wrote something. I will not even write this company one star due to the unprofessionalism in completion of work. Hire this electrician to do a 100-watt panel, never grounded, never finished, and left a mess. He's known for not cleaning up. Had to hire another electrical contractor that was most professional. Now, when did you write that review? About the same time. 2018? Yes, on okay. a different now, review. That was a different one. Mm -hmm. And you said that you had to hire another electrical contractor. Yes, I To did. finish the job. And who was that? That was DMB Electric. That was him? Yes, I, I called two Just a second. Two Just a second. In what year did you call them? Oh, this was... No, in what year did you call him? 2013. After he left, you called them? I called two other contractors. Just a second. Did you end up using Mr. Burnley? Yes, I did. Okay. So back in 2013, you were dissatisfied with this company? Yes. Let me follow this. 2013, you were dissatisfied with the company. You called another company. Two other companies. Just a second, you called another company, but the county had signed off on your job. Yes. What you say in your answer is that they signed off erroneously on the job. Well, yes. I have to take a face value they're signing off that the job was completed. And I assume you got your homeowner's insurance. Yes, I did. After he left and after you had the county sign off. Yes. Yes. Okay. But they now, just a second, okay. don't tell me a but, but. No. Now, five years later, because this was written in 2018. Correct. Five years later, you're now dating Mr. Burnley. Correct. Who is now living with you. No. Who had, well, you say you moved in in 2021. Oh, 21. Yes. Yeah, yeah who's now living yeah. with you. You began now. dating in 2018. <clears throat> That's correct. And Mr. Burnley, who is now living with you, and in 2018, you woke up one morning and said, who now has his own electrical company, woke up and said, Five years ago, Mr. Frazee's company and he did not do a professional job in my panel. And now we're dating. And now all these negative reviews come, not in 2013 when we... Sarah, you have Yelp and all those mm -hmm. things in 2013? I'm not sure if I can get back that far, but I could search. And I wasn't they, aware of Yelp. Just a, I don't care what you were aware of. Okay. You mean you woke up in 2019 and found out that you could give a star or a view? That's the first time you found that out? I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Well, it's I just true. want to tell you something. I don't believe you. I don't believe that when you want to go to a restaurant, Miss Booth, and it's a new restaurant, you don't take a look on your computer and say, I wonder how many stars it got. I wonder if there are any reviews on this resort. Yes. Well, then you were smart enough to do this. My sons now, are in IT. I, so they I want to tell you something. I don't believe you. Okay. Because I'm older than you are, and I know about this, and she can tell you I'm an idiot on the machine. <laughs> well, I, so I, so I don't, I don't it. buy it, and I don't buy actually. Yeah, it is. I can't see Your any Honor. of her reviews. I, your no, Honor. 
but there are reviews on Yelp of his business that all are very positive. I have yeah. them if you'd like to see them. I will look and at I them. And I have negative reviews that that says the exact same thing what Cindy posted. Just a second. You don't understand what I'm saying to you, Mr. Burnley. I'm saying to you that it was nasty and malicious because if she was unhappy with the service, it would have been posted in 2013, I did. 14, 15, 16, 17. And it wasn't until the two of you were hoochie-coochieing that all of a sudden we got negative reviews about a job they did nine years before. That's ridiculous. It's mean-spirited. All those positive reviews that you posted, did any of them have to do with people that you're sleeping with? That's a question. No. No, of course not. Of course not. I'm not that okay. kind of girl. Electrician John Frazee has accused his former client, Cynthia Booth, of posting damaging reviews years after the job was completed. It's mean-spirited. That's not correct. Just a sec. You say it's not correct. Well, I'm, I'm looking saying... at the timeline. I'm looking at an inspector's report right. who is a disinterested party mm -hmm. who signed off on an electrical work. I'm listening to Mr. Burnley, who five years later did work that replaced his work from 100 amps to 200 amps with a surge protector, and all of a sudden, you start writing negative reviews about their company. That's the timeline. And if you want to try to fill me in and make me feel as if I made a mistake, I'll give you 30 seconds to okay. do it. Okay, yes. We started seeing each other in 2014. And my sons are in IT administration, and they had told me, Mom, you don't you know Don't about tell me Yelp. what your sons, don't okay. tell me what your sons okay. told me. I you. didn't know about Yelp or Google reviews and, oh, and back at that time, because I'm not computer savvy. You want to know something? I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Okay. I'm almost 80 years old, a lot older than you are, and I know that if I want to look something up, which I do occasionally, I look something up and I say, did so-and-so eat at this fish restaurant? It's a new place, it's a new town. I'm going to go there and take a look at it. I know how to do that. I know. And I'm an idiot, and I'm an idiot. <laughs> and if you just found it out, if you just found out I'm how to do it, school. then there was no reason for your first review to be about his company, no, about a job that was done. There's 91 other reviews yep. I've posted. Just a second. Positive or negative? Positive. Are you sleeping with any other electrician? No, I'm not. Just a second. That's the end. All those positive reviews that you posted, did any of them have to do with people that you're sleeping with? That's a question. No. No. Of course not. Of course not. I'm not that okay. kind of girl. What I'm telling you is the timeline doesn't make sense. These nasty reviews written about a job that started nine years before, in this case, six years before, now that you are sleeping with a head of an electrical company don't make sense. And my nose tells me if it doesn't make sense, it's not true. Now, when you came back a month later, what else did you do? That's it. Didn't that clean time. up a mess. At that, at Just a second. Time. Didn't clean up a mess. Yes, I cleaned up the mess. You cleaned up what my mess? My mess. He oh, doesn't your mess. clean up his mess. Well, you didn't. That's what she told you. No, I, I have other reviews of other people on the internet that I'm posted asking, that... I'm asking you a question. You didn't clean up his mess. I didn't no. clean up his mess. I right. understood you. Okay, well, that's what I I'm said. Sorry. You didn't clean up his mess. No, I cleaned up his mess. And didn't write a review. Well, I didn't know about uh, Below, I'm telling you, you can say it until the cows come that's home. I don't true, believe you. I don't believe you. And I don't believe that the first year that you found out to write a review is when you and Mr. Burnley started a relationship. I just don't believe it. No. And I think it's mean-spirited. You have to know, Miss Booth, I think it's mean-spirited. But we were seeing each other in 2014. You were seeing each other in 2014. Yes. You have a company, sir? Yes, do I you do. have a company? Yes. Are you licensed? Yes. What's the name of your company? DMB Electric Inc. Just to, would you take a look at that, Sarah? Mm -hmm. It'll be under DMB Shh. Electric Services Inc. And in what year was your company formed? Uh, this one. This, this one's 2013. He had a prior. Shh. I had a prior one. 2013. Yes, Your Honor. Was that before or after you did her job with him? Before uh, or license, after? I had the license before. No, the company. I said, was the yes, company formed? Yes, the company formed? was established. Shh, be careful, because she's a whiz with the computer. No that's, no, that's good. Was your company formed before? Yes, Your Honor. Before you did the job with him? Yes. 
Okay, in what month in 2013? Oh, I'm, I don't know. Are you guessing? Day. Yeah, I'm going to guess guessing? January. Yes. Was it before or after you did the job with the plaintiff? If you don't know the answer, say, I don't remember. I, I don't remember. Okay, now. The business was incorporated March 20th of 2013. Does it have any reviews? Only four from the past two years on Yelp. I'd all like, positive. By the way, did you ever write a review for him? For did you ever write a review for Mr. Burnley's company? Ah, uh, oh, it's not an answer. Did no. you ever write a review for Mr. Burnley's company? Stop shaking your head, Mr. Burnley. Did you ever write a review for Mr. Burnley's company? Uh, no. No. Okay. I don't know what it is that you didn't understand. Sir, you didn't say much. You don't have to say much. I got what went on here, and I think it was mean-spirited, and you're suing for $10,000. I think that their reviews and the abuse of the critique of your business warrants the award of $10,000. You have a counterclaim. Which yes. one of you has a counterclaim? I do. Yeah, I want to tell you something. Your counterclaims dismissed. I think that you were a co-conspirator in her writing these I reviews. I not. Counterclaim is dismissed. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of ten thousand dollars. We're finished here. Thank you very much. Your Honor. This court We're done. Honor. During the COVID shutdown, when nobody had any work in a small community of fifty-five hundred people. That's what they chose to do. Hey, I'm glad it's behind me, man. That's all I can say. He was just getting his license, and I helped him begin his business, and this is how he serves me. I agree with the judgment, but why $10,000? That seemed a little high for me. You can permanently hurt somebody's business, their livelihood, if you write a negative review. Because people more and more rely on the internet when they seek a service, rely on somebody else to say, I've had a good experience or I've had a bad experience. I believe, based upon the timeline that we heard, that the defendants wrote these reviews for a reason other than bad electrical work. Mm -hmm. Because if there was bad electrical work, that would have shown itself between 2013 and 2018 when her fiance redid the whole system. Or it wouldn't have passed the inspection. Or it wouldn't have passed the inspection. So that to me is malicious. Mm -hmm. I think you have to get a real wake up call. Mm -hmm. And to me, $500 doesn't do it. No. It's malicious and I don't think he has to show any real. Previously on Judy Justice. You were looking for a job. And what were you supposed to do? Bartend, close, open, and run the concession stand. I want you to do a step-by-step -step why you contacted the authorities. Chris was still giving out free alcohol to people, pouring it, wasn't even checking people's IDs. So I called the ABC and I said, I think there's suspicion that he's giving minors alcohol. And that was very distressing to you. So distressing that you said to him, do you have any other work? for us. Yes. And did he say, I have an apartment complex that needs painting? Yes. And it was after the painting kerfuffle that you called alcohol beverage. So we shouldn't, Nobody have, we was shouldn't have reported it at all. No, I, we shouldn't no have I'm it? trying to get to your motive, sir. And now, the conclusion. Noah Joyner and Harlan Hendrickson have accused their former employer, Christopher Ricks, of vandalizing Noah's car and refusing to pay wages. Christopher claims they slandered his business. Now, you have photographs of the place before you started painting and afterwards? Do you have any photographs? Absolutely. I'd like to see them. It's just the, the paint on the floor. The just paint. a second. Okay, very well. I, I have eyes. Thank I can you. look at the pictures. So the I just want to take a look if I need any. How they are before we paint them. That's before they're painted, Your Honor. These are your photographs? Yes, ma'am. You painted the floor? No, ma'am. We had to declutter a couple of units that had stuff. One in unit. Like that. Shh, shh, don't speak. You had to, what you call declutter, and you had to sweep it up before you started painting? It was worse. Than okay. That, Your Honor. And did you? Yes, ma'am. And is this a picture of what you allege it looked like? When... All of the units had stuff in them just like that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And this is the floor that you painted? Yes. Is that the floor that they painted? One of the three. Okay. So they painted the floors. Did you paint anything else other than the floors? Well, we painted the walls. They painted the Sorry, walls. They dripped the on the floors. They are. Okay. So they're brand new floors. You were told it wasn't, Shh. it didn't have to be perfect. Just a second. You didn't put these floors in, did, did you? I thought they painted them. No, no. Um, they were to do touch-up only, 
and there were there was one unit that needed to be finalized, and that was the one you saw that was bad. We were and having the, the floors and were. Shit. I told you, don't speak when he is. I'll come back to you. The floors were brand new, and like I said, I, I provided drop cloths and such. They didn't no, use them. That's what, not really shh, and, what is this? That's the one unit that was not com, that was it uh, completely it was emptied out. Okay. This one. Yeah, there was one single unit. And this one. That's the same unit. And this. Same unit. Okay. And the rest of them were cleaned out. Yes, ma'am. Is that correct? All new floor. Yes, the pictures of the yes. Uh, 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 the pictures of the mess are all one, one unit, unit yes. of the twenty. Okay. And how many units did they paint for you, Mr. Ricks? They didn't finish any of the units. They okay. were in they were in three units, Your Honor. Okay. And three units Shh. have damage. That's okay. What you're telling me is they didn't do a good job in three units. Correct. Okay. Well, they that, didn't finish sir, it at all. that I'd like to see the photographs of what they didn't finish. The, the paper copies? There you go. Um, and you, there's, there should be one that's a door that's not even painted. You can see it's two-tone. And the flooring is where they, I guess, scraped the floor. Okay. This is the same picture um, there's, as there's, this. No, that's different. I can show you on my phone too if you'd like. They're different. They're, it, it's like in one of the areas they tried to use a tool to scrape paint off in different areas, and that's what was that's left. Incorrect. You're talking you about me with any that's tools. not true. There was no tools provided for us at all. Just, I didn't ask you anything. Sorry. Is what you're saying to me, sir, that the reason you didn't, I, I assume you weren't paid for this work. Is that correct? No, you're no. Not even for cleaning out that unit, really. Shh. Weren't paid. Now. I assume, Mr. Ricks, that you didn't pay them because you thought that they did a poor job. No, ma'am, that's not accurate. Why didn't you pay them? They didn't do the job. They worked there at some point. I um, agreed with Harland only to pay him $3,000. Harland, that was you. Yes. That's you. You agreed with Harlan For that job. Yes. To, Your Honor, that's for incorrect. For $3,000. You're almost finished. Do you understand? You're almost done. One, two, three warnings, then I'm finished with you. And, and it wouldn't bother me at all. I have to tell you, it wouldn't bother me at all. Now, what arrangement did you make as far as payment is concerned? On June... Mr. Hendrickson started the job first on June 23rd. Mm, he was to meet me, and he did. He was late. He was supposed to meet me early. I showed him the whole scope of the project because he hadn't been there and what I wanted done, what I expected. And we agreed on the price of three thousand dollars. And incorrect. after they got halfway done, which was ten units, I would pay them fifteen hundred dollars. And then when they were complete, I would pay the entire three thousand. They didn't get past three, Your Honor. Three of the twenty. Yes, ma'am. And they didn't finish any of those at all. Okay. What I'm saying to you, Mr. Ricks, you took one guy, right, who you didn't know from a hole in the wall. Yes, ma'am. You took a second guy who you knew was there because. I believe that you knew he was there painting with Mr. Right. Joyner. Right, Mr. Hendricks actually fired him twice. You can see in text message if you need to see that. You mean Mr. Hendrickson fired Mr. Joyner? Yeah, he says right oh. here. Oh, oh just, Your Honor. just a second. Well, let me just pull up the text message since it's so But you do know that Mr. Joyner was there. Yes, ma'am. Okay. They were, they were, it was a group. They decided to do a group thing. This is the, right here it says, never mind. No, no, no not going to help me anymore. Group chat. And then there's an additional where he says again that I'm going to let Noah have a couple of days off. Just a second. Mr. Hendrickson, so on the 29th, you indicated to Mr. Ricks that Noah, that would be you, is not going to be helping me anymore. Yes. Yes, and you want to tell me why? Noah and I had... No, look at me. Noah and I had an argument at the painting job. Tell because me about we were the argument. Tell me about the argument, sir. We when did you have it? We were about the detail that we were putting into our work. I walked in and Noah was paying a lot of attention to detail and Chris told me that the job did not have to be perfect. He just no, no, wanted no. it to be just done. Just a second. So Noah was trying to be careful. Yes. And you said you don't have to be so careful. Yes, Your Honor. Is that what it boils down to? Yes, Your Honor. And that was on the 29th. Yes, correct. So after that, he said he's not going to work for you anymore. Correct. Now, so I gather from that statement that since you were working there since the 23rd, you didn't feel as if you had to be so careful to detail. That is I mean, that would follow from what you just said to me. If Noah wanted to be more careful to detail, you said, oh, no, you don't have to be so careful to detail. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? And goodbye, which is what this says. So I have to assume 
conjure up in my mind that if you don't have to, doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be such a great job. It can be, as my great grandmother used to say, there's a difference between a schmearer and a painter. That's right. Now, I don't know who would understand that except another Jewish grandmother. But you understand the connotation. You can schmear paint. I have a nine-year-old granddaughter who can schmear paint on a wall. But if I want something professionally done, I try to get a painter. I told Chris I was not a professional. Just a second. You see, that's my problem with Mr. Ricks. If you want something done right, get a man, not a boy. Tell me the worst thing he told you to do. I don't know what you were wanting from me. <laughs> what I want you to do is to tell me what he told you about black mold. Don't make it up. Defendant Christopher Ricks claims Noah Joyner and Harlan Hendrickson slandered his business on social media. Noah and Harlan say they were not paid for painting Christopher's apartment complex. Now, if I wanted somebody to work on one of my cars, I would not get somebody off the street who was selling popcorn at a concession stand and say, by the way, my car over there needs a new battery. Now, would I take my car back to the same dealership? Maybe not, because they're very expensive. But would I find somebody who at least had a referral a recommendation, I have a 20 unit apartment complex that was empty, you wanna use it as a business. You don't hire two schmearers to go, to go and take well, care of your property, them. but you have to, if you didn't like their work, fire them. And if their work was not complete and only three units were touched, which I don't think that they argue with, so far that's correct, Mr. Hendrickson? That is incorrect. How many units did you Five. paint? Five. And I actually painted seven, but I didn't complete the last two. I just okay. did the trim in it. So you completed five units out of 20. Yes. I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. And you agreed to $3,000. That's incorrect, Your Honor. How much? We did not have a meeting to talk about a payment until the 29th. And that was actually part of the reason that him and I were arguing. Um, Chris and I and Noah met at a coffee shop, and we spoke about how much we would be getting paid. We agreed on a $3,000 price for the end of the month of July because Christopher was supposed to be going on a vacation until July 20th. So the $3,000 was mentioned. And it was mentioned, and then he told me and Noah, Chris told me and Noah that on the 30th, he would pay us half of what he was going to be paying us. Just a second. You were hired to paint 20 units. Yes, Your Honor. You painted five, which is one quarter of the $3,000. Yes, ma'am. Let's say those apartments were complete, not satisfactorily to him, but now you both agree that the $3,000 price was mentioned for the 20 units. Yes. It would be $750 if they did five units? That's all, $750. That would be $750 if you completed only a quarter of them. Okay. Did you pay them any money for painting, yes or no? No. Okay. Good. So best case scenario for the painting is $750. And I haven't gotten to his counterclaim yet, but you have one more claim. And your claim is that Mr. Ricks vandalized your car by throwing paint on it. Strong. Tell me when that happened. We woke up July 20th, 2020. 720. Where did you wake up? At our house, our apartment. Hospital okay. Tell me.
Yes. But after I cleaned it, I took it to the audio, auto body shop to see what the actual repair Okay, was. do you have pictures of it after you cleaned it? After we cleaned it, it looked somewhat like this. And then we had to take it to the body okay, shop. We, we, they buffed out the rest of it for okay. us. So what you're telling me is you took it to an auto body shop and the auto body shop... They helped clean up the rest of it, but they still took off our top coat. Okay, very good. Well, you have no proof he did it. So far, he owes you $750. May I interject that he doesn't even own that I car? I don't care. I'm not giving him any money for the car. There's no proof you did anything to the car. Okay, I'm not going to get into filing a false ABC complaint with the sheriff because he's not going to be able to prove to me that it's true other than by what he says are his own observations. He doesn't have anybody here who's under the age of 21 who's going to testify that you served him alcohol. So I'm not going to entertain that part of your claim. Money owed for slander, that I would like to see. That's there a cross complaint. So far, plaintiff has $750 for painting one quarter of the places that he was contracted to do. This is the first um, document and I had calls just pour in, um, wanting to know if I'd seen it. And just then, a second. Don't mm -hmm. tell me you had calls pouring in, sir, because yes, that's hearsay. What's the date on this? This one that I'm reading. I says one day ago. It was around the first couple of weeks of July. Okay. I'd like you to tell me, Mr. Joyner, the conversation, where it took place, and under what circumstances, when you had a conversation with Mr. Ricks about covering up certain hazards. I'd like to hear that. What would you like to hear? I'd like to hear where the conversation took place, exactly what you said to him and what he said to you. Where it took place? Yes, where it took place, exactly what you said to him and exactly what he said to you. I'm confused, so like, what is, what are we, what is? We are on now. I know the, a, the post a, about a the- post. Yeah. We're on now a post. So I want you to tell me when you had the conversation where you were and what you said to him, mostly what he said to you, about covering up certain things with paint. Okay, yes ma'am. So we were told to cover up holes and stuff with caulking and then paint over it. And then we were told that I was Don't look told, at me. I was told to go declutter one of the units that had a bunch of old parquet tile, ceramic tile, piled high to the ceiling with old ceiling fans. Well, that's, yeah, that was the unit that was on right. Go ahead, right. and? So we, he told me that I I had, want you to tell me the worst thing he told you to do in the apartment complex. Tell me the worst thing he told you to do. There was a lot of terrible No, 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 no. <laughs> Just stop and think of what is the worst thing he told you to do, the worst instruction he gave you. Pretty much that I should just do it without the proper protective. No, that's that's general, sir. Okay. I asked you specific. You posted something about him, about his apartment complex, about the work that you were doing, and I want you to tell me the worst thing he told you to make short shrift of or to cover up. Mm, water damage, black mold. Okay, let's go to black mold. When did you have a discussion with him about black mold? The Where were you? The told me to declutter the apartment. So that would be Wednesday, June. So there was one apartment that he told you to declutter. Okay, and that would be June what? Monday, June 27th. I'm, I think that's what that is. Was he there in person? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I'd like you to tell me what he said to you and what you said to him. Told me to go... Look here, look here. Told me to declutter the unit, take, off, uh, take out all of it, throw it away, and to just... No, no, don't look over there. To clean, look. just to clean it, basically. To clean it. So that it would be ready to be painted. And? I did, I cleaned it. And? I'm done. You're done? I don't know what else to say, that's... Well, I want you to clean it doesn't tell me anything about black mold. I don't know what you were wanting from me. <laughs> what I want you to do is to tell me what he told you about black mold. Don't make it up. Your post, based upon your testimony, was slanderous. I got confused. I don't know what you were really trying to like ask out of me. I asked you specific questions. You gave me answers. Now is not the time to play catch up. Defendant Christopher Ricks claims Noah Joyner and Harlan Hendrickson slandered his business on social media. Noah and Harlan say they were not paid for painting Christopher's apartment complex. Now, tell me what he told you about black mold. He didn't tell me anything about the black mold. Right. And what did he tell you about rat feces? Didn't tell me anything about rat feces. I handled all that stuff Shh. about mold. 
then you did that all yourself. Well, in this posting you said, Chris, that would be you, wanted us to paint over chips, possible, dust, maybe, mold, never. He never told you that. That's what you just told me. Black mold, rat feces, and urine. He never told you to cover up those things. You may have done it, but according to you, he just said, clean it. He had told and that, you to cover up the mold that was uh, in oh, the I don't believe that. of the apartment. Oh, I don't believe that. In a second. That's Mr. Joyner. Yeah, it was Mr. No, Joyner. this is Mr. Joyner's kind of post. Together. And he never told him anything. According to him, he said, just clean it. Can you have the second post? That one was taken down, and this is the second post that he reposted, and then his account got blocked because they don't allow that type of behavior. This is the next one, and this is where he claimed to be a bartender on Facebook, and he just took it down recently. It's been up there for months, and I never hired him for a bartender. That's all right. I don't care. That's not important. Okay. What I'm concerned about is what he says that you told him to do, which you did not. Right. He acknowledges you did not. Now, you have no witnesses here. Um, I was going to bring one person, and she's got I, COVID. Should have, would have, could have. You oh, have yes, no I have witnesses no one. here. I have no one, Your Honor. Very good. Okay. I find that the things that you posted are slanderous with regard to what he instructed you to do, Mr. Joyner. You were the posting person as far as covering up black mold, feces, and urine, and therefore to beware of Rick's realty. Your post, based upon your testimony, was slanderous because he never told you that. So... Uh, but you never really cleared that. I'm sorry. You never really cleared it up. I got confused. I don't know what you were really trying to, like, ask out of me. No, just a second. It was I don't told care what... to me that I needed uh, to take care of all that stuff and throw it away. Yes, ma'am. It was told to me that. Just That's a second. why I posted it. It was a warning as to, like, so no one else would have to deal with that same very, stuff. Very, very good. Very good. I'm ruling now, so now it's my time. I asked you specific questions. You gave me answers. Now is not the time to play catch-up. I find that by posting that he instructed you to cover up black mold, people responded to, actually, and rat feces, I don't know how you cover rat feces and urine with paint, and to stay away from his place of business without cause, because what you told me was he told me to clean it up, that that's slanderous. And so on the counterclaim that he has for slander, I am awarding him $2,750. That's a net net to him of $2,000 because your claim of $750 for wages is absorbed by his counterclaim. So on your claim, you get zero. Zippity doo dah. I'm awarding him $2,000 for slander. We're done here. Thank you very much. What we about are, the damages, We right are now? finished. Hire professionals, Mr. Riggs. You want a schmearer? That's what you get. This court is adjourned. Regardless of terminology and how things got messed up, why would you expect someone to clean up rat feces, all of this stuff, and do it for free? It's clear no good deed goes unpunished. I tried to help those kids. I don't understand any of this, really. Well, they were trying to extort money from me and not do work and be lazy and just get paid for work they didn't do. We're trying to move on. We're going to move on. <laughs> kind of try to give people chances when they're down on their luck. I've always been a philanthropist to try to help people out, and sometimes you get burned. First of all, if you're an employee and you're working either by the hour or by the day, you're not a weekly employee where you, or a bi-weekly salary employee, you're supposed to keep track of the hours where you work, especially if you want to if there is a potential of suing later for them. As a plaintiff, that is your burden. I was interested to see that you were willing to take that information from the defendant because if it were me, if the plaintiff didn't have it, that's not the defendant's burden to well, prove that's the plaintiff's true. case. So I, I knew you did it to sort of round out the, the sides of the case, but I think that if you as the plaintiff want to come here and ask the court for money, you better have your ducks in a row. And well, that's true. Huh? That was true. That was probably an error for me. <laughs> not that he got anything. but We um, got where we needed to go. We but... got where we needed to go, but that's true. It's not the defendant's burden, yeah. although the defendant acknowledged that he worked for him. He did. Very forthcoming and honest, So, but that, again, played better for the defendant, as we saw in the ruling, that he was You're professional. You're supposed to have your ducks in a row. Yes, and as a plaintiff, you don't get any money if you can't even keep track of the hours that you work. The second thing is that the call to alcohol and beverage, you know, if you'd feel as if you're doing a public service by reporting behavior that you think could be potentially dangerous, I support that. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing it as a retaliatory act and you don't do it immediately, it's like reporting 
suspected child abuse. Mm -hmm. If you see a child being abused or neglected and you do nothing and wait a month until you have a fight with the person mm -hmm. who is the abuser, that creates a suspicion that it's vindictive and there's a motive to lie. Of course. Because it wasn't done immediately. And they sought another job from the same man after reporting him. Right. You know, to the defendant's detriment, in my eyes, is if you have a big apartment complex and you have guys who were in the jewelry business and didn't make it, then came to work for you in your theater and really weren't very good at that either, then I wouldn't hire them to house paint. Yeah. You know, that actually without, requires a skill. With, with, without, any, without any credentials. So I think that you have to be careful if you have a valuable piece of real estate. Agreed. Anyway, he can't slander him, and he did. I think it all worked out how it was supposed to. I hope so. Brooke Batiste is suing her ex-roommate, Adrian Carter, for property damage, breaking a lease, and a dog attack. Court coming to order. All rise. Be seated, everyone. Hello, Judge. Case 2080, Baptiste versus Carter. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Baptiste, you and Ms. Carter were roommates. Yes, ma'am. From when to when? From October 7th to April 1st. Actually, May, May, May. And it is your claim that Ms. Carter vandalized certain property of yours. Yes, Your Honor. Most specifically, a very expensive couch. Yes, Your Honor. Because you had an argument, and that during the course of this argument, her dog bit you? Yes, Your Honor. And for breaching the lease, because yes, she left? Yes, sir. Okay, but it was a good thing that she left, right? Yes, sir. You were happy that she left her dog bit you, she vandalized right, the was, sofa, you were very happy very that happy she, she left. Yeah. You were very happy. So we're going to eliminate that breach of the lease part. No. no. Oh, yes, we're going to eliminate the breach of the lease part no. because you were happy that she left. I didn't want her to live in the same okay. situation as her, but being that the rent was so expensive, it wouldn't have been my best interest for her to leave. It's with her, to stay with her dog that bit you. Right. I mean, I don't want you to sound ridiculous to me, okay? Right. All right, let's not sound ridiculous to me. Normal person, if they were bitten by their roommate's dog, and if their roommate vandalized their property, that roommate would be happy to see them go. But I'm not happy with the expensive rent well, by myself. Well, of course, but your choice would be staying with her and her dog that bit you. But if her name's uh, on uh, lease... Uh, just a second. That's between her and the landlord. I just told you, I'm sticking with vandalizing and dog bite. So tell me when this dog bite took place. It's on March 29th. What kind of dog was it, by the way? It was a Belgian Mal Malama. What do they look like? It looks like a German Shepherd. Is that what you have, Miss Carter, a Belgian Yes, Your Mal Honor. Yes, Your Honor. A Belgian Malama, like a police dog. So it looks like a German Shepherd? Yes, ma'am. So it's a large dog? Yes, ma'am. And when you moved in together, you moved in with the dog? Yes, Your Honor. OK. So tell me what happened March 29th. OK, so before March 29th, Adrian and I got in a petty argument. It was dumb. We made up. In the argument, she confessed to me that... No, just a minute. You engaged in a petty argument, mm -hmm. and then you made up. Yes. And the petty argument was on what date? It was on the March 27th. And you made up? Yes. OK. On the 27th, what were you arguing about? My dog tore up the carpet, and she sent this long paragraph, and we were just going back and forth, and we realized it was dumb, so we decided to drop it. And that's when she confessed to... On the 27th? Yes, ma'am. So you were arguing about the dog, and then on the 27th, after you were over the argument about the dog, is that what you're telling me? Be yes, very careful. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. She confessed that she gave the guy that I was seeing a lap dance. And? And I immediately cut all ties with her. So you cut all ties with her how? I stopped speaking to her. Even though you were roommates? Yes. Okay. Um, after uh, I stopped talking to her, Social media posts were made. By whom? Adrian. Okay. Social media posts were made. Do you have those? No, I do not. Do you have those? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Why don't you have them if this is your case? They erase, but um, I have other things that I think you would want to see. I'm going in order. This is a case. So right. Don't try to creep into my mind. You've been saying your complaint a couple of days later. There were things posted mm -hmm. on social media. And is what you're telling me that they were erased? Right. I, I didn't save anything that she posted. Oh, never mind. I don't have to see anything. Correct? Correct. Right. So you didn't save anything? 
No, ma'am. Then you have no okay. evidence of anything that happened so, late. So uh, I saw that she had no remorse for what she did, then I made social media posts. Adrian was mad that I made social media posts, so the next morning, she's yelling at the top of her lungs at 10 in the morning. I wake up to see what she's yelling about, and she's just saying how I'm a and I shouldn't have posted what I posted. And we were just arguing about the situation and I asked, how could she do this to me? It was a very heated argument. She was yelling at the top of her lungs. I was yelling at the top of my lungs. During the argument, her dog is whoo -hoo, going crazy. And while we were arguing, we were pretty close. The dog bit me and I said, you need to get your dog. She said, no, your dog is good. And we continued to argue. The dog came to bite me again. And that's when I uh, grabbed what was behind me, which was a paper towel holder. And I chucked it at the dog. So the dog bit you on the arm? Yes, ma'am. Twice. OK. I would like to see a medical report on that. OK. All right, I have a photo of the bite, uh, the antibiotics. And then this is the report. Would you show this to Ms. Carter, please? Your okay. Honor, I know she has a video of the entire incident, if you'd rather. This it's is, not her this obligation is... to prove your case, as my law clerk so aptly told me in the last case. Not her obligation, it's your obligation. Okay. So, go ahead. After her dog bit me, I immediately grabbed my dog and I go to the hospital. I uh, filled what out What kind of dog do you have? I have a Doberman. Where was your Doberman when this was going he on? He was in the cage and he's still a baby as well. So I went to the hospital, got treated. While I was at the hospital, Adrian uh, called the police and she said that I attacked her dog. Don't tell me what she said to the police unless you have a police report. Yes, ma'am, I have a police report. Then I'd like to see the police report. That's an official business record. So this is the um, first police report for the dog bite. Okay, go ahead. All right, so April 19th, this day, Adrian knocked on my door. No, April 19th? Where yes. April 19th? Uh, I thought we, you moved we, out on April 1st. No, she moved out on April 19th. So is what you're saying, after all this altercation, she moved out? Yes, ma'am. And stayed in the apartment with her dog from the 29th to April 19th? Yes, ma'am. And um, I, I went to a friend house the day the dog bit me, and then I went home for a week, and then that's when I came back, and this second incident happened. So so after the dog bit you, you did not go home. You took your dog and left. Yes, ma'am. And stayed at whose house for a week? I stayed at a friend that lives an hour away from my current apartment. On what day did you return? So I stayed one night at a friend's house, and then I returned, and then I went home for a week. So... When you went... Stop playing with papers. Yes, Your Honor. When you went home for the day, was the defendant at home? Yes, ma'am. Did you have any conversations with her? No, ma'am. Just stayed out of her way and packed a few things and left? Yes, ma'am. And you went to stay? At uh, home in Alabama. With your family? Yes, ma'am. Until things cooled down, basically. Okay. And when did you go back? I went back, I believe, April 17th. And what happened when you went back on the 17th? A few days later, April 19th, um, Adrian was knocking on my door at 9 a.m. in the morning saying that I need to come to the leasing office because there's a new roommate here. I told her no, and then that's when she started threatening me and calling me all these kinds of names. So I take my dog again, I go outside, and I call an officer, and that's also when and I called my mom and she convinced me to go up there to speak with the new roommate to see, you know, who they what were. What new roommate? Just a second. She tried to get two young girls to replace her on the lease. And it was unsatisfactory. Yes, ma'am. So far, Correct. I have a dog bite. And yes, couch. So after I said no to the two roommates, uh, one didn't have a job, they looked young, I said no, I went back home. Ten minutes later, Adrian home. Comes. You mean to your folks' To our house. apartment. Oh, to your apartment. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, 10 minutes later, Adrian comes in. I was in the room with my door locked. I hear Adrian yelling. I hear her throwing things. She's saying, I can't believe you did that. You really just did that. I don't care. I'm still moving out. I'm still leaving. I'm not paying rent. Blah, blah, blah. I didn't come out the room because last time it got crazy, so I just said I would let her do what she does, and I will let the authorities handle it. She did come out the room, Your Honor. Shh. When I finally came out the room, which I have a video, and it came out, she had moved the, the couch in front of the door so I couldn't get out of my room. And Well, the, how did you get out? I jumped over it. And um, the trash can was flipped upside down. I have pictures of all the damage that she did to the house and videos. The, well, I'd like to see them, okay. please. And I would like to see the damage to the couch, which is your major complaint. Yeah. Okay, so 
this is the damages, and then I have a video of the entire incident. Right here. Want to tell me how that happened? I did put chips and items that wasn't wet on the couch out of anger. I shouldn't have did it, but I did do it. And I didn't put liquid on it or anything. Literally, you can... Don't speak. You had no right to even attempt to destroy it. At all. Later. So at that moment, I was like, you know what? I'll just do it myself so we can stop the confrontation. So then that's when the argument started, and he thought that I was kicking him out, which I never told him he couldn't come over, never told him he couldn't be a part of anything. It's a failed business venture where you it's both not expect... A, it's not a hey, business venture. This is not, this is not a tea dance. Brooke Batiste claims her ex-roommate, Adrian Carter, owes for couch damage and a dog attack. By the way, did you have any unreimbursed medical bills as a result of this dog bite? That's either a yes or a no. No, ma'am. When did you purchase this couch? I purchased it the day we moved in, so it was October 7th. How much did you pay for it? I paid 2,200 in total, and Adrian and I were paying on it a little bit in the beginning, but there came a time where we had to make the final payment on it, which was 1,200. When we had the argument, she didn't pay anything, so I had to pay it all by myself, and the couch is in my name. Did the couch remain? Um, yes, ma'am, the couch is at the house. What does it look like now? It's black, but there's a, um, it's an odor coming from the couch, and there's some stains on it. Do you have a picture of it, what it looks like? Uh, huh? No, ma'am, I just have the pictures that I gave you. Okay, but you're still using the sofa. I... The answer it's is... It's a smell. It... No, ma'am. I don't sit on it anymore because it's a smell. So why don't you get rid of it out of the apartment? I'm moving October 6th, and that's when I plan to get rid of it. But you've been using it since April. It's just been sitting it... there, Your Honor. I haven't well, had sitting time. in your apartment since April. Yes, ma'am. April, May, June, I just haven't June. made the time to get rid of it because I know I'm moving soon, and that's when I plan to get rid of it. I wouldn't keep something in my house that smelled. I work a lot, and I... Would been... you please show this... To the defendant. Okay. Want to tell me how that happened? I did put chips and like items that wasn't wet on the couch out of anger. I shouldn't have did it, but I did do it. And I didn't put liquid on it or anything. Literally, you can... Daughter. Don't speak. You can no. get a napkin and wipe it off. But that's my couch, too. Maybe I didn't pay the whole thing on it, but I've made payments on that couch, and I decided not to do that full payment that she did, which was $600, because she was irresponsible and decided to rent a couch and found out that that couch was whatever amount. I made payments on that couch, and I have proof for it. That's okay. You had no right to even attempt to destroy it. At all. At all. You had no right to do that. Right. Because that devalued the sofa. I agree. Okay, good. Okay. I'm actually finished with you. Your Honor, can we please go back over the lease portion of this? No. Can my mom speak about what happened? No, I said no. <laughs> when there's that kind of acrimony, I actually think that before somebody gets seriously injured, when you have two large dogs and two people with hot tempers that can do this, it's a very, very good thing that they no longer live together. Being stuck with a rent <laughs> and... I've just knowing... a second. I've just answered you. This is not a back and forth. Yes, sir. On the dog bite, I am awarding you $1,000. It looks as if part of it was a black and blue mark. Certainly, I can't blame the dog for trying to protect its owner, but she's supposed to have control of her dog all the time. And she said, so, This is not a tea dance. I'm not asking you anything. And I'm awarding you $1,200 for the sofa. That's $2,200. Judgment for the plaintiff. We're finished. Thank you very much. What did she just did something messed up, and I cut her off, and she didn't like it. I literally cut her off. She's just mad that she's cut off. She's yeah. delusional. She's delusional. She's childish. She's irresponsible, and I was just sick of dealing with someone draining. Just yes, don't get roommates with your friends. Just move in by yourself. I'm happy. You had a question about the lease. I did. So I agree that it was best for the acrimonious situation for them to separate and not to live there. So I understand your judgment saying it was better for you. You got the good end of the stick on that, that she left. However, the law, if you breach a lease, she did get stuck with a higher portion of rent because her roommate, although 
a negative situation that should have probably ended right when it did, she was stuck paying her half as well. So I thought you should have at least heard her claim on the breach of a lease because then anyone could just say, oh, well, I don't like the situation and I feel like leaving would be a better thing and stick their roommate with their portion of the rent. And that's not what the law says. Well, that's true, except that this wasn't just a situation where parties weren't getting along. Mm -hmm. There's no question that she was nipped Mm -hmm. by the defendant's dog. Well, I wouldn't want to stay in that situation anyway. Well, that would give her the right to maybe leave without paying her half of the rent, but that's not what happened. It's also sort of acknowledged that the defendant brought two other people to take over her piece of rent. And it was in the papers, and the plaintiff did not... She did say that she she was the one that said no. She said, I don't want those two people. Well, then the onus really falls on her to mitigate her damages. Mm -hmm. And she had no proof that she went forward to to try to get another roommate. Between the two of them, they may have had an agreement, but the dispute over rent really is the defendants and the landlords. Mm -hmm. She doesn't pay her rent, and if the plaintiff pays her half of the rent, the landlord is free to go against either or both of them. Sure, because both their names were on the lease. Understood. Case 2083, David versus Baruch. Hello, 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 voice checking. Please make you mad. Voice checking, voice checking. कैसे हो आप सब लोग मिस्त्री आए हुए हैं देखो दोस्तों ये हमारे फ्रेंड है बहुत ही शानदार लेटेस्ट डिजाइन डिजाइन चश्मा पहने हैं इसका नाम क्या है वो आप कमेंट करके जरूर बताना तो आपको पता चलेगा कि हाँ आप हमारा सब ब्लॉगर वीडियो देखते हो तो दोस्तों मैं आज लेके आया हूँ बहुत ही शानदार माहिती देखिए आज की तारीख क्या है वो कमेंट जरूर कर सकते हैं आप और आप कहाँ से वो भी ठीक है दोस्तों आज का गोल्ड का रेट है बहत्तर हज़ार सेवेंटी टू थाउजेंड ऑनली और सिल्वर का रेट है एटी टू थाउजेंड ओनली आपके वहाँ क्या रेट चल रहा है अभी वो भी जरूर मैसेज करके जान करें और आपको गोल्ड सिल्वर ज्वेलरी बारे में कोई भी जानकारी चाहिए तो भी जरूर एक बार रिप्लाई जरूर कीजिए मैसेज कीजिए कमेंट कीजिए और हमको अभी तक सब्सक्राइब नहीं किया तो सब्सक्राइब कीजिए और एक बार जरूर वीडियो को शेयर कर सकते हैं और दोस्तों आप कहाँ से वो आपका लोकेशन जरूर जिला डिस्ट्रिक्ट तहसील तालुका गावड़ा कंट्री वो कमेंट कर सकते हो इसमें कमेंट करने में कोई दिक्कत नहीं आनी चाहिए क्योंकि तो मैंने कमेंट अलाउड कर दिया है आपको कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं आई आपके कमेंट आपकी कमेंट होती है कि नहीं होती वो जरूर मुझे मैसेज कर देना है दोस्तों काइंड मास्टर में टकावारी नहीं बताता इसका भी सॉल्यूशन जरूर निकाल के मुझे मैसेज करें टकावारी क्यों नहीं निकलता अभी हो गया है दो मिनट तो मैं तीन मिनट तक आपका टाइम वेस्ट कर सकता हूँ ज़्यादा टाइम मैं नहीं लूँगा और आगे बोलूँगा तीन मिनट के बाद मैंने बहुत ही कुछ जानकारी आपको दे सकता हूँ इसलिए मैं तीन मिनट मेरा परफेक्ट नहीं आपका टाइम वेस्ट करने का नृत्य किया हुआ है निर्णय लिया हुआ है तो तीन मिनट तो आपका बगाड़ू बगाड़ूगा हाँ तीन मिनट के बाद आपको कुछ बहुत ही अच्छी जानकारी देने वाला हूँ तो हमारे साथ बने रहिए और वीडियो को लास्ट तक जरूर देखिए बराबर है दोस्तों दोस्तों ये भैया आ रहा है और निकल गया तो थैंक यू दोस्तों मिलते हैं अगले वीडियो में थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू